of Education. Today is, a, is September 19th. It's a regular meeting at 6 p.m. May I have roll call, please? Mrs. Avery? Here. Dr. Bashir Blau? Dr. Bill Wu? Here. Mrs. Chester? Here. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Here. Mr. Gentile? Here. Dr. Parmenter? Here. Mr. Gates? Here. And Mrs. Clark? Here. If we could all rise for a flag salute led by Mr. Jim Gentile. Thank you. In accordance with Public Law 231, both adequate and electronic notices, this meeting was provided to the press, the Gallery Township Municipal Building, and the District website on before August 18, 2022. We do have approval of minutes this evening from August 22nd, the regular meeting, and also the special meeting. Can I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Is there any abstentions? I abstain. Any other abstentions? Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. At this time, we will open the floor for public comment. Is there any public comment this evening? If you do, please come to the microphone and fill out uh, the information in your name and state whether or not you're a gallery resident or not. And please limit your comments to five minutes. Uh, good evening. I'm Doug Satterfield from uh, Galloway, New Jersey. Uh, I stood here before in opposition to the state's Department of Education mandates on age and appropriate material and uh, gender theory. Uh, today I'd like to focus a little bit more on gender theory. Uh, to save time, I wrote uh, the, um, uh, the board and I believe everyone has a copy of my, my letter to the board. It's a one page with an attachment uh, and, and that's really to save time. But I would like real quick just to read a couple comments from the letter and I'll, I'll try to be brief. Uh, boys, today uh, you are to approve a new curriculum based on the state's uh, Department of, of uh, Education guidelines. Gender theory is one of the most contentious political controversies in recent memory. Uh, what you're considering teaches and promotes gender theory as fact. This theory, and it is a theory, is a wholly untested, forcing schools to conduct an involuntary school year long social experiment on our children. The damage, the damage teaching gender theory will cause incalculable and catastrophic results to the most vulnerable of the children. Any professional scientist conducting such an experiment on children would be rightly accused of unethical conduct. Today, you're poised to approve it. Teach kids how to think, write properly, speak plainly, and read well. That predicts future success and fulfillment in life not taking time away from classic education to indoctrinate them with a politically motivated and proving theory. The most important people in children's lives are their parents. The schools should partner with parents on this topic, not by preempting parental rights and obligations or dismissing them by simply saying they can opt out. I ask that you categorically reject all gender theory instruction in this school's curriculum and do so unequivocally. Uh, and again, what I'm saying is, quite frankly, mainstream from the people of New Jersey and, and, and Galloway. Uh, people in Galloway have a very deep trust that you will do the right things, and I think that's deserved of what you've done so far, especially in matters dealing with their children. And I do as well. I trust your judgment. Please don't let us down by accepting this appalling idea of gender theory. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sarfield. I believe Dr. G. Quinto, would you like to make a comment or would you like to I will uh, be talking about curriculum in general when we get to that item on the agenda. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sarfield. Is there any other public comments this evening? If you could also fill out the form and just state your name and letter and letter. I believe it's right there on the podium. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Deanna Ramos, and yes, um, my son goes to uh, GTMS. He's an eighth grader, and I had just recently um, sent an email that it seems to be, it was originally 
initially for the principal and then it got to uh, the superintendent. And it's regarding, I'm having um, what seems to be, uh, okay, so I have um, a signed statement of conscience that I sent to the school principal regarding the health course curriculum that clearly states that I do not want my child to participate in any health, family life, or sex education. So, if um, according to the New Jersey Department of Education, which states that the parent's statement of conflict for NJSA 18A 35 through 4.7 recognizes and respects that some families prefer to have these conversations privately. Any child whose parent and guardian presents to a school a signed statement that any part of instruction in health, family, life education, or sex education is in conflict with his or her conscience sincerely held moral or religious beliefs shall be excused from that portion of the course. So I sent my email right to the principal and I went along with what the state told me to do and um, and asking that my son to be excused. And I was told that uh, family life planning starts in the second quarter. But once again, I'm not just talking family life planning. I'm also talking health care, comma, because my health care might not be your health care, such as abortion, okay? So then also sex and social, um, whatever they're gonna be speaking about as well, pregnancy options, all of that is against our um, spiritual beliefs, our religious beliefs, and our morals and values. And it's something that I, as a parent, have a right and duty to um, teach my son and for him to be excused without penalty. So I want to know, um, or at least what I'm stating is, you know, that we have some sort of, um, I'm recognized <laughs> and that I, my son is given an alternative option and what needs to happen going forward because I feel like I'm going in a circle right now with emails. So I'm here at this meeting to find out what needs to be done and we as parents need transparency. We need to have a clear outline of the district's plans for alternative instructions during these lessons while my son you know, will be taken out for that 45 minutes, 50 minutes, however long that period is. This is my first time ever coming here to you guys. I, um, my son has been part of the district this entire time. He's a straight A, high honorable student. I love Galloway Township. I'm not here to put anybody down. I'm grateful for the education and the service that has been provided to my son because he does excel in this township. I'm here as a parent because I am convicted and I believe in truth and I believe that justice needs to be done and it's my duty to advocate and protect him. So if whatever has to happen, I do not want my son part of that curriculum. Sex, health, social, family, life, pregnancy, which is entailed for all the four quarters. So whatever needs to be done. And okay. again, I'm here out of love and, and out of you know, kindness. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you for your comments. And I think Dr. Jim Pinto would like to respond. Thank you, Ms. Ramos. I appreciate you sending the email and coming this evening. As I indicated in my response letter, what is going to happen is prior to the second marking period, when anything related to family life and the topics that you name uh, that may be part of the eighth grade curriculum, you will get a detailed letter. It will tell you what all those topics are. You have the right to opt out of the entire thing or certain topics within it. And then uh, that goes to administration so they know that. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, then uh, it will also include the form that you need to sign to indicate that, and the information about what your child will do while the other children are learning that. My response in not just accepting was your statement of conscience was no disrespect to what you said. We are trying to make sure that we have this done systematically, because what I don't want to happen is if parents start sending things randomly, something to get lost in the shuffle, and then your child ends up in a class you don't want him in. And that is why we are doing this very systematically. So that specific information will be coming out and you will have that opportunity to make your wishes known through that form and we certainly will follow them and honor those. 
being said, the whole like because how it's over four courses, four so, you know the four semesters, correct? No, the, the, because the, the family life, isn't it? So it's saying family life. That's reproductive organs. That's what they were talking as family life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure there was no sex. There was no health care, you know, all of that that's entailed, sex education, health care, family life, social, sexing, all that, that was under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure that it's not over the four courses spread out, and he started, like, tomorrow, he has health class. It cannot start. None of that starts until second marking period. It is spread across second, third, and fourth marking period in eighth grade. And so what will happen is, depending on which topic they're doing in phys ed and health, if it is one of the topics that falls under the family life areas that you are uh, listing, then he will do an alternate activity. And that's where the letters go to be very clear, so that you know what you don't want your child to do, and so the school, okay. the teacher and the administration, knows what you do not want your child to do. Okay, thank you for clarifying. That's oh, you're welcome. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Is there any other public comment this evening? Also, state your name, uh, fill out the information, and please just keep your comments limited to five minutes and let us know whether or not you're available. Will be built into the letter, hence the form. And that's perfect. That's, that's exactly what I'm here. 
The other is a different topic. It's about communication. Again, I'm always about communication, you know me. Um, so having a child in Afghani High School right now and having a child in GTMS, which is a freshman, and then having my child in GTMS in eighth grade and having a child in Arthur Ramp. My biggest concern, again, is communication. And the one thing that lacked last year, which I was so disappointed, was the communication between Greater A Copper Regional High School and the Galway Township Middle School. I have talked to both sides and different things, and um, you know, and I understand there is something missing. There's a big piece missing. And I heard from different comments from different parents and different people that, oh, well, these kids from GTMS can go to you know four different high schools, or five or six now at this point, between private, um, greater A, and ACIT. However, probably 90% of our students, I'm gonna guess 90%, go to Abscambia High School. I might be maybe 85%. So that pretty much is the majority of our children from Galway Township Middle School go to Abscambia High School. How can we as parents have you, the board, start supporting our children going on to that next level? It seems like when we leave here, we forget about them and we move on. And I feel like that's a disservice to the families of this community, it's a disservice to my children in this community, and it's a disservice to the people in this community. Um, there are referendums going on right now that we haven't heard anything from Galway Township Middle School. I don't understand why not. Why aren't we supporting our children going on to high school in the greater Egg region, not just our school? Why aren't we, as Galway Township Middle School, or Galway Township, supporting greater Egg? And I understand, you know, I'm getting so much communication from Abstamia. It's amazing. I get text messages, I get emails, I get letters. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I haven't gotten this much information. From Arthur Rand, I get a lot of information. From the middle school, not so much. And it always comes from um, one or two emails sometimes, so I get confused if it's from the middle school or where is it from. Like I got one from Darling Dairy, I think it is, and it says FSA. But that doesn't tell me it's Galway Township Middle School. It doesn't tell me anything that that is Galway Township Middle School sending out an email. And I think as parents, when you're going through emails and you're getting me probably like 100 a day to work, uh, then forget the spam, then I need to know who's sending me an email. Is it a proper email that I'm clicking on? Because again, there's so much spam out there. So I'm just asking, is there a way that we can come up to support both schools, all schools, you know? And if, I mean, I would more than happy to do something, you know? I really just feel like it's just something we really need to do. And that goes on for different activities that are going on. I know we uh, was approved for um, October 14th for the Galway Township Middle School band members to go to the high school. And so I'm waiting for Mr. Dondera to say something, and I'm talking to Mason to see if something is said. It was just announced, but today it wasn't said, and it was all approved. So my thing is we really need that support for these programs that you worked so hard all these years now to go to the high school and know what's there. It's, there needs to be um, a really um, working communication between all of us, so thank you. Thank you. If I could just come back at you for, with a question. I'd like to hear your ideas on what communication could be made. Mr. Rain is sitting here this evening and going to give a presentation about the referendum that you're speaking of, so hopefully we'll learn more about that. We are two different yeah. districts, right? So our board doesn't govern what they do, they don't govern what we do, but you're absolutely right, our district feeds into their district. So we have over the years tried to enhance that and, and you know support our kids and we all have gone to stuff with the, the high schools and, and I'd just like to hear your ideas in the future. Yes. You know if you could filter them through Dr. Giacuinto if you have specific ideas that you could do or that we could do to support our kids as they move on that would be great. We have you know board members that were teachers at Epsigam that you know we, we do try very hard I may not you know seem it to you but we do try very hard and I'd like to hear what your thoughts are moving forward, not, not in this forum, but moving forward, if, if we could hear what your thoughts are, how we could do a better job of doing that, that would be great to hear. No, thank you, I, I do understand, I think, I mean, like I said, we can work all together. I think that's the biggest thing, and so I'll definitely come up with some ideas, so. And again, as I said to you last time, there's always an opportunity to become a board member. <laughs> thank so, you. it's open, right? <laughs> thank you. If I could add, President Carmen, I do need to say I don't agree with the characterization that we don't support the high school and that there's not communication. Um, for example, Mr. Reyna, uh, the superintendent of Greater A, and Mrs. Halk, the board president, are here this evening to make a presentation about the Greater Egg referendum. We Facebook information about it on our uh, uh, Facebook page today, 
and along with a piece of information from our school district, information about the rep uh, referendum is getting emailed to all our families today. In addition to that, and again, as uh, President Carmen said, it may not be visible to everyone, but we do communicate re regularly. Uh, Mr. Reyna, as the superintendent of Greater A, myself and all the superintendents in the constituency uh, very often are consulting with one another. I know Mrs. Junker as the uh, middle school principal and Mr. Kern as the Absagami principal are in communication. Uh, and I do know in terms of the transition itself, uh, Mrs. Junker happens to be here and if you could just nod, I believe Greater A is present at back to school nights normally. So middle school back to school night is tomorrow night and parents who attend that will see a table of Greater A representatives right here at GTMS. And then as the year goes on, there are other opportunities that help prepare the students for the transition. For example, an eighth graders high school scheduling happens here at GTMS. Representatives of Absidemi High School actually come here and they're in the library. And I, I, I don't want to talk longer than the five minutes myself, but uh, if your child just entered eighth grade and you don't have an older student, you would not know about all these different things that we do do because you are correct. The transition is natural to greater A, mainly Gabby. Obviously, we know some students pick a different greater A high school or select another high school. The other thing I do want to mention about not knowing who's sending, the way school messenger works is when a school messenger email is pushed out, it has to be associated with someone's email. So from the district level, you'll see Mrs. Westcott. And I believe the subject line makes it clear. So if Mrs. Junker sends the uh, school messenger email, it will come from her email. If she has her secretary, Mrs. Dury, do it, you will see that name. And that is the way the school messenger system works. Certainly, we will try to make sure that the subject line is specific so that you do know that it is a legitimate email uh, from the district. Obviously, we have our first district community advisory, and, and Mrs. King knows she has joined that committee. And uh, our first meeting is some updates and topics in general, but communication has been one of our topics over the years. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone public comment this evening? Again, if you could state your name and address, whether you're not living in Galloway, and please limit your comments to five minutes and then fill out the form when you're done. Or now. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Nancy Sylvester, and I do reside in Galloway, New Jersey. I had a uh, question that I was asked to ask, because several people that asked me to ask this question because they felt that they were a little nervous asking me of themselves. So I will ask it on their behalf. Are boys allowed in girls' bathrooms or changing rooms if they identify as a girl? And if they are, what happens to the girls who are uncomfortable with the situation? Second question was, um, I realized that some of the gym teachers or health teachers, I don't know the proper terminology, are not comfortable teaching this curriculum. If they decide not to teach the curriculum for whatever reason, it could be religious, it could be whatever other reason that it is, what do you do with them? Do you fire them? Uh, so in terms of the first item, there is law to govern um, how things are handled when a student uh, indicates he or she is gender fluid or is transitioning from one gender to the other. Uh, we have a Board of Education policy that is based on that law. So does that law allow for a student to use the bathroom or uh, another area of the gender that they believe they are? And I'm not going to get into debates about all the different terminology, but that is based in the law. That is not a school district decision. 
Um, it is not something that, when I look at the number of children in the district, it is not something that occurs often. And there is a very systematic way that the child is making those requests that it is handled. There is administrative involvement, guidance involvement, uh, teacher involvement, etc. Um, to this date, uh, no problem regarding any of this has been brought to our attention, and it is something we are sensitive to. Uh, because we always are looking at the safety of all of our children, that they feel comfortable in school, that they feel comfortable in different locations. And so, for example, we also have the ability to identify a single person bathroom that a student could use. Um, and so this way they're not in a restroom with anyone else. But that is handled on a case-by-case -case basis following Board of Education policy, which is based in the law. Um, in terms of a health teacher not being comfortable, um, over the years we've had teachers who have felt more or less comfortable. For example, the, they were teaching one type of history and the state changed the standards and they had to teach a different type of history. Um, so staff members, if you are certified in an area, we do have the right to assign them to teach it. I will also say this in terms of health and family life, particularly with the changes from the state, a lot of time and energy and resources and support are being provided to our health teachers to support them in implementing these standards. That includes meetings with the administration, including the building administration and the director who oversees that, as well as bringing in presenters, holding meetings, and all of the health teachers had the opportunity to give input into the creation of our curriculum, what materials, and things of that nature. This cost, because it goes against certain beliefs or ideologies, do you find it? There are guidelines regarding staff. Um, that situation has not come up. If a staff member brought that up, in all candor, I would be contacting our attorney. But I have not had experience with that. And certainly, if someone is a tenured teacher, and even if they're a, a non tenured teacher, they have due process rights and an association to represent them. But I, I don't speak in hypotheticals. That's never happened. Okay, and as far as laws, you're saying that's because it's Jersey law, am I correct? That these things are being, have to be, these guidelines have to be followed. I'm sorry, could you say that again? I'm asking you that you stated that these guidelines are being implemented according to Jersey law. We implement things in accordance with the law. Okay. Um, you know there was a time when women couldn't vote? And we said that law was unjust. There was a time when Rosa Clark could not sit, had to sit in the back of the bus, and we changed that law. I think if you believe in something, then you enforce it. If it's not your belief and you feel it needs to be changed, then you have uh, the right and the opportunity to do something about it. So I think that speaks volumes. But thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment this evening? Seeing none, we will move on to uh, reading the communications if there's any, and then presentations. Thank you, President Corman. Uh, as Mr. Satterfield mentioned, he did submit a letter to the board, and I did forward that letter to all the Board of Education members. Other than that, we have no communications this evening. Uh, as chair, uh, I'm pleased to welcome Mr. James Rainey, the superintendent of Greater Acorn Regional School District, to provide a presentation about their upcoming referendum. And also thank Mrs. Howe, president. Uh, she has a handout for our board members. I may help you pick it up for you. You may know sensitive they are. Serena, if you need to take that mic down there or take it out of the thing, you'll see. We'll see if this, this works. Thank you. It would be nice if I took the tape that and walk in front of you. Typically, it's um, my, my happy fear would get to me before anything. <laughs> Okay, 
First off, um, thank you very much for your time this evening. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, before I dig into this actual presentation, I just want to take a couple of minutes and I want to express my thanks um, as Dr. Giaquinto is winding down her career here in Galloway Township. Um, Thirteen years ago, I was asked to give a tour to her when I was uh, about six months before we opened Cedar Creek. And I don't know if you remember that, uh, but that was the first time that we had an opportunity to work together and, and since then obviously it's continued, whether it was my role as, as principal at Cedar Creek, principal at Oakcrest, and now superintendent. And I will say coming in in the middle of the pandemic last year, um, the experience I was able to lean on from all of our constituent districts um, was, was a huge help to me. Um, and in that personally, I do thank you for your, your time and your guidance. So thank you. Um, and for the board, um, I want to tell you that Steve Santilli and I had worked together off and on since about 2007 when he was at Davies and I was at Oak Crest and then he was at Davies when I was a principal at Cedar Creek. So certainly that's a relationship that has been strong over the years and I look forward to, to working with him as well moving forward. Um, so actually now, see, Annette, I think you set me up. It's not, So I actually was just going to take a couple of minutes real quick. Um, what you're going to see tonight is a referendum for a total dollar amount of, of roughly $21 million. Although we are only going to be um, financially responsible, the communities are only going to be financially responsible for roughly $11 million. And I'll show you how we get to that number. It's a terrific percentage to have uh, that, that low an amount actually being financial responsibility of the community. But, a couple of things I wanted to point out, as this board is certainly aware, and as I'm sure many of the people in the audience are aware, there's been a lot of federal money that's been made available over the last few years for boards of education. And if you look at that first square, um, we pumped uh, roughly $5.5 million out of our just under $9 million to HVAC projects, the largest dollar amount going to Absagami. As I'm sure a lot of members on the board know, HVAC came under the guise of air quality during COVID. So we were actually able to remove projects that would have been in this referendum, projects that we would have been having to go to the taxpayers to be responsible for. We capitalized on this federal money being available so we could lessen the burden on the taxpayers moving forward. Um, and you can see also in there just a a significant dedication to mental health and emotional well-being. Um, we now have Atlanta Care staff in all three of our buildings. We have Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 contracted services in all buildings. So we are both proactive and able to respond to students and families in need. Um, the next slide is actually the focus on Absagami High School. Um, So out of the roughly $21 million, um, Absagami is actually the largest, getting the largest chunk, $7.855 million as you can see there. Um, for the board, the packets that you have in front of you that the board president, this is how handed out, um, is this entire PowerPoint presentation for anyone here. I also have flyers that I can leave behind. Um, and as Dr. Giaquinto shared, I know she was sending out information to your, your school communities today. Um, just moving real quick around this project, everybody kind of starts in the, in the lower left-hand corner, the red. Um, that track is, is roughly 15 years beyond its designed uh, existence, its designed life cycle. So the track is being completely milled and resurfaced. We are um, renovating and updating the concession stand and the public bathrooms there. We are moving to LED lighting in the stadium and we are moving to a turf field um, that will be striped for field hockey, soccer, and lacrosse. So boys soccer, girls, girls soccer, boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, field hockey, and football will all be able to be played in this stadium. Um, one of the things that we're doing in all three of 
our buildings. I've gone around, I've spoken to every board of education, I've spoken to the town councils. Um, we are extending um, the use of our stadiums with the turf facilities and the lights at no use to all of our middle schools and all of our, all of our communities. Um, so the Amsterdamian Athletic Director and I are sitting down with Galloway Township Athletic Association next week. The Renegades, the Mustangs, the Youth Lacrosse Program want to use that facility. That facility will be made available to them at no charge. Uh, the only thing we're going to require is if it's, if it's on a weekend when we don't have staff on duty, you would have to pay for a custodian or a guard. But we're not going to charge any of our middle schools or any of our communities for the actual use of the stadiums. Our goal is to create an environment where the youth sports are playing immediately after our high school students. So if Absagami Boys Soccer is playing at 4 o'clock, we would hope that the local youth soccer is getting on the field at 6 o'clock so those kids can come a little early, watch the older kids play, and, and just kind of get into that, that old, people call me old-fashioned, but that old-school mentality of the high school is kind of the center of the community and it's where everybody goes. Um, so that's a complete redesign, and that's similar to the work being done at all three buildings, the turf field, upgraded tracks, and LED lighting. Um, the yellow number two above that is our tennis courts. That's something that's also common to all three buildings. All three tennis courts are getting completely reground and resurfaced. The tennis courts in all three buildings, like the tracks in all three buildings, are open to and used by community members. If you go into Absagami on a Sunday morning, you usually see anywhere from 10 to 15 uh, community members playing tennis, and that's available. Um, all hours of the day, as long as it's daylight, at no charge to the community. The purple number three right next to that, uh, and we hope to actually be able to add more, but that's the minimum. We're upgrading some of the walkways around our facility that right now are dirt or rock or rock. We're going to update them to macadam and concrete, so it's a little easier for seniors, it's a little easier for those that may have some, some mobility challenges to move around the property. Oakcrest is getting a lot of that same work as well. Number seven right next to that is the uh, gymnasium. Uh, the bleachers in that gymnasium are the original 1982 bleachers. They look cool, the wood, the old school wood, uh, but unfortunately we're getting to a point where the manufacturers do not even make parts for them anymore and we're in the same situation at Oakcrest as the motors or other aspects of the movable bleachers break down. It's very hard for us to get parts, so it does make sense to try and move forward and, and, and replace them with newer uh, mobility compatible bleachers made out of plastic and glass. Um, <clears throat> number seven is our library at Absagami. Uh, for those of you that have, have not been there in a while, what we're going to look to do, um, and this is you know kind of something that's coming out of COVID, is students and teachers are using more and more outdoor space. We're going to open up the walls between the library and that main courtyard so it actually becomes more of an educational center for kids to get out there. The number seven, just to the right of that, um, the Board of Education this year, as one of its goals, made a focus on um, increasing opportunities for students that are not necessarily college bound. So those are upgrades to the wood shop in Absagami, including some equipment and a, and a brand new dust collection system. Uh, and again, that's a commitment we're making. We're also trying to partner now, <clears throat> excuse me, partner with um, both the Carpenters Union in Hamilton as well as Ideal Technology in Pleasantville. And our students that may be interested in getting into the trades, we're looking to build a program where senior year they can get out of the building for at least half a day and actually go out and work in the field. And then the number seven at the bottom. Um, is the PAC, that's the auditorium. Again, all three auditoriums are getting the same work. All new lighting, LED lighting, uh, new light board, new sound board, new sound system, including wireless microphones for all of the students. Specifically in choir and drama, that's a huge thing right now. They have to rent sound systems to be FCC compatible at about $4,500 a show. So this will allow us to just maintain or just utilize what we have without that added expense. <clears throat> now, 
Number six is some, some resurfacing, some black topping. Um, number eight is, is white and it's kind of back up in the middle under number three. That's the one that usually gets the loudest ovation when I talk to Absagami graduates. Um, those trailers are finally going to be taken down and removed. Those are the temporary trailers that have been there for the better part of three decades now. Um, and they're going to be replaced with outside basketball court and a courtyard for students with picnic tables and benches to both eat outside or utilize after school. And then the fives and the fours, the green, have to do with updating some irrigation and uh, recrowning of some fields. The, the idea of having a turf field um, is to make game day always on the turf field. So again, whether it's field hockey or it's girls lacrosse or it's boys soccer or it's football, games are all played on the turf, then the practices and everything else go on. So I know some people have thought that the stadiums were being built for one group or one organization, but the reality is the stadiums are to be shared by everybody. They're actually going to make it much easier for our band uh, in all three buildings to practice. Right now, two of the buildings the band practice in parking lots um, because they can't march on the grass day after day. They wear it out with the turf. The bands will be able to get in the stadiums a lot more, and that's what they compete in. They compete on AstroTurf under the lights, so that'll help jumpstart them also. Um, the next two slides are Oakcrest and Cedar Creek. I won't spend nearly as much time on them. Again, a lot of the projects are the same. The turf um, is in all three. The tennis courts are in all three. The traps are in all three. The pack, that commitment to the performing arts is in all three. Oakcrest, real quick, you can see that red line. There's a lot of pathway work done around that property. We're also adding two more uh, ADA accessible and mobility friendly parking lots closer to events so people don't have to travel as far. And then Cedar Creek, newest school is the smallest dollar amount. Um, that's just under six million. Again, it's, it's the tennis courts, the pack, um, the stadium, resurfacing of the, the soccer and lacrosse field, uh, and then number four is their pack as well. So the next slide is the total dollar amount. It's $21 million is the total cost of this project. Um, we're very confident in those numbers. We've reworked those numbers. I, I hate to use this, this landmark, but it's accurate. Those numbers were, were reworked within two weeks of Russia's invasion of, um, of the Ukraine. And I say that because prices immediately started increasing. So we have repriced all of this kind of in the new market, if you will. You see that figure, the estimated state share is 8.8 .8 million. Um, that is unheard of, and, and certainly Dr. Giaquinto could, could support the idea. Um, the state has some cash right now, and they're paying for things they don't normally pay for. Six months ago, that number for the state share was 2.4 million. They are now paying for the traps, they're paying for the tennis courts, they're paying for the bleachers, they're paying for not the turf field, but the underneath, the, the drainage work, the, sort of the infrastructure for the stadiums. Those are things they don't normally pay for. They have the cash. They basically said to us, if you are going out now, this is your year to try and get this increased funding. Um, so that's a huge advantage for us to do this now. There's an extra six, almost six and a half million dollars that was not there just over six months ago. And so you see that local share is 12.1. We also have 1.25 set aside in capital reserve that we're going to pay cash. So this is an important screen, um, and there's only one more after this I want to hit on real quick. I, again, I appreciate your time. There's been a lot of talk about how are we doing this without increasing anybody's tax costs. Um, the simple answer is we are paying off the 2002 edition at Absagama. So we are taking our old debt, paying it off, and we're sliding the new debt right in. The logical question that comes from that is, well, if, I, if this doesn't go through, how much do I save? And I draw attention specifically to this screen because um, somebody asked me last week, they said, well, somebody told me that my taxes are going to go down five or $600 a year. And the reality is, depending for Galloway Township, the average homeowner is going to see taxes go down $20 a year. Um, again, you're talking about debt just under $11 million spread out over 20 years. 
across four communities, Hamilton, Galloway, Egg Harbor City, and Malacca. Um, so you spread that out over tens of thousands of taxpayers, it, it's not a lot of money. And that's why we believe very strongly with the increased state aid and with the fact that we're paying off the old debt and the commitment we want to make to our middle schools and to our communities, we think this is a, a wise investment when it's not going to increase anybody's costs at this time. And then just the last page, Dr. Giacuento, um, this is something, a question that's come up from a couple of people. That $8.8 .8 million, and I'm sure the board realizes this, but for any community members that are here or that are listening, we can't say just give us the 8.8. .8. The 8.8 .8 is contingent upon us passing this referendum and starting the project. You know, you don't get to just say, well, we'll take the aid but not incur the debt. The debt service is incurred as a result of the community supporting this referendum. So that $8.8 .8 million, if we don't use it, we'll go to other communities that pass referendums. Um, and some of the upgrades, um, you know, in, over the last 10 years or so, the idea of turf in the stadiums is, is really become now almost two-thirds of the Cape Atlantic League has turf in stadiums. We are now kind of in the minority. You can see that Atlantic City, Pleasantville, Ocean City, EHT, Vineland, Bridgeton, Hamilton all have it. Millville and St. Joe's are both starting building this year. And Buna passed a referendum very similar to this last year. And, and they're going to be adding turf to their stadium as well. So that idea that everybody now gets to play in the stadium from second graders on up through 12th graders, boys and girls, any sport, we think is a valuable, um, valuable asset for the community. Um, again, I, I appreciate your time. Uh, the date is October 6th. Um, we have on our website, uh, there's a, actually there's a separate website, vote.ghrhsd.net. Um, that's on the flyers that I have here. That's on what was sent home. There's a frequently asked questions section. There is also uh, information on, on polling locations and places. Um, so again, I thank you for your time. Uh, we do, you know, we are excited for this opportunity. It's something we'd like to be able to open our doors more to, to our middle schools and our communities and, and have them, have them in, the, in our buildings even more than we do now. Dr. Giacomo, thank you. President, thank you. Um, does any of the board have any questions? Yes, normal hours. At 7 to 8? Um, I, I, I believe it's 7 to 8. That is on that vote.gdhrhsd.net also, the hours and locations. Are we using schools to vote? We are not. We are not. Okay, and my second question is, are these three projects at the three different schools taking place simultaneously? Good question. Um, one of the things, you know, we don't want to put the cart before the horse, but one of the things we've started to look at is, okay, well, you know, one company bids for all three tracks. Well, who's going to give up their track season next spring at home so they can be the first one to go? Who's going to give up their stadium first so they can be the first one to go? So we are hoping that we have enough variety that we can kind of roll projects through at different times. Um, Fortunately, because we've been working on this for a couple of years, the architects and the engineers have already done an overwhelming majority of the prep work. So if this passes on uh, October 6th, we will be ready to go out for bid within days. And that's important because October 6th is actually the first referendum date available this year. We want to be at the top of the list. When you're at the top of the list, you get more aggressive bid prices because they still need the work. Um, so our hope is that there aren't a lot of districts that are going to be able to say to one of these companies, well, you're going to have work for 12 months because you're going to do three tracks. You're going to have work for, for six months because you're going to do three tennis courts. So our hope is that we can just roll them through and people are going to be very aggressive with their bidding because we can keep them working straight through. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Ryan, I have a couple questions. Yeah. So my first question is, Exactly what you said. You know, you went out to bid two weeks before um, Russia invaded Ukraine, and there's been you know significant increases in costs to that point. So you, the 21 million is an updated cost, and I applaud you for doing that. But my question to you is, 
what happens if it goes up exponentially, another 10, 15, 20 percent? You know, does the local share then increase that entire amount, or will state aid adjust it's based good, on bids? It's a good question. So we did build in a, contin a contingency. Um, that's the first aspect, or the first part of that answer. The second part of the answer is the biggest concern we had was the cost of petroleum. Um, it's in the plastic for the bleachers, it's in the black top, it's in the turf, it's in the track, it's, it's in the bleachers and the gymnasium. That has already come back down roughly 20% from that high point. Um, so, you know, we are fairly confident that we're in a good spot now. Um, what we would have to do at that point in time is we might have to lay off smaller aspects of the project and do through our regular budget and look for some other answer. But we would not just, and we cannot, and I'm sure the board knows this, automatically just lay an increased burden on the taxpayers. And then my next question to you is, I think it's fantastic that, you know, potentially there's not going to be a tax increase, but my question to you is, what happens when state aid is announced in the spring? You know, here you're representing that there's not going to be an, an increase, so one could get the perception that you're going to be at a zero for next budget year. This is entirely separate from the operating budget. Okay, so you're not... This is entirely separate from the operating budget, so this $8.8 .8 million of state aid is what the Department of Ed has already given us in writing as guarantee for this project. All of this is already Department of Ed approved. And because it's setting off current debt service, that's where the zero comes it's from. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Now, and for the last two years, we've been 1%. We haven't even taken a full 2%. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, and I know some different districts have different philosophies. We, we don't believe in just automatically taking it if we don't. If we don't need it, so you know, our goal would be the same for next year. I understand. Thank you. Is there any other comments from the board? Uh, um, I'd like to know. I want to say as nicely as possible. Have you done other presentations to other districts? And like, this is two and a half weeks to the vote, and you're giving us a presentation. I just think it's kind of late, considering that ballots went out in August. The mail mail-in ballots. Well, and, and I appreciate that. I know it was difficult to line up different evenings and, and different board meeting dates with different communities. I have been in another community as recently as just the middle of last week. So part of it was just seeing what lines up. For example, in August, I believe, unfortunately, our board meetings were the same day. And, and I know you were also hiring a superintendent that night. So it was just really the availability of trying to find when when we could both get together. Mr. Green, am I correct? You have presentations other than now, other than a board meeting. Yes. Yes. And my next question is, if, if this fails, are you going to bring it again next year? Well, the problem is we don't expect to have that $8.8 .8 million because the states told us that when that money is gone, they're going back to their old model, which is they don't pay for tennis courts, they don't pay for tracks, they don't pay for bleachers. They don't pay for that type of stuff. Um, so if we were to go back out, there would be an increased cost. Um, so that would be something that the board, you know, would certainly have to consider our plan moving forward. It would be, it would be premature and, and, and for lack of a better word, inappropriate for me to answer that without communicating with the board. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. the time. I want to thank Mr. Reina and Mrs. Hal for being here and taking time uh, to present directly to our community. We, as per the agenda, we do have another presentation this evening. And my apologize, I'm having mouse trouble this evening. So we'll get that figured out. Oh, now you're working. Good evening again. I would like to acknowledge that my successor, Mr. Santilli, is with us this evening. Thank you for being here. Uh, this particular presentation is a required presentation by the state of New Jersey. 
and it is, as you can see, the 2020, 2021 official HIV grades. And you may be sitting there thinking, but it's 2022, 2023, and I will explain that. I do want to thank uh, Mrs. Burgess, our Director of Student Services, who's also the District Anti-Bullying Coordinator. She works with the schools in uh, collecting and doing all the steps that are required, uh, and thanks to the principals and assistant principals and their teams, and also thank Mrs. Burgess for putting this presentation together. So, here is the requirement and the process, and why in September of 22, we're talking about the 2021 school year. So at the end of each year, the school does a self-assessment. So at the end of the 2020-2021 school year, every school did its self-assessment. That information is then presented at a meeting. And as you can see on the screen, that happened in January of 2022. We are then required to submit that information to the Department of Education. Then what happens is the state reviews it all and gets back to the district to confirm or not confirm the grades. They take the self-assessment and basically give you back the same data. So we received that back from the state in May of 2022 and now have to present the grades this evening. You have seen uh, the board this information, and if you were a regular attendee at board meetings, you have seen this information when we uh, presented it as part of step one. So as you can see, uh, there are eight core elements, and so for each element, uh, I am not going to read these slides to you. I'm just going to make some general comments. You can see at the top of each slide is which of the elements it is, and then down on the left, you see the various indicators. On the right, you see the total possible points for this indicator. And so the members of the School Safety and Climate Committee at each school sit down, they look at uh, the rubric from the state, and they discuss what has occurred at their school for that year and they give themselves points. So you can see for this item, uh, the self-assessments range from 13 to 15 points out of the 15 possible. Uh, you can now see item two that relates to training. You see that there are nine possible points and the schools range between seven and nine in their self-assessment. This other uh, next item continues with the concept of instruction for staff and training for staff. Here we have the 15 point possibility and a 13 to four, excuse me, a 12 to 14 range. We now shift into curriculum and instruction and its relationship to the issue of harassment, intimidation, and bullying. And so this relates to instruction, uh, every October, the schools recognize the week of respect. Six points possible. Uh, all the schools gave six. Pomona did do a five. And one of the things we find interesting is that preschool is not included in many things from the state of New Jersey, but they expect us to do this for preschool. And as you can imagine, how you're going to handle this with three and four year olds is going to look very differently than our other children. Uh, now we look at personnel, each school having uh, an anti-bullying specialist. The specialist meeting leaves twice a year, and I will say uh, Mrs. Burgess uh, meets with the school anti-bullying specialists who are our counselors and the assistant principals in excess of that two times per year. The school safety teams now are also meeting more than the required two times per year. And I will say uh, that as recently as this summer, uh, Mrs. Halfoko provided a training to all of our administrators and team leaders 
uh, and our School Safety and Climate Committee members. Uh, this is the HIB reporting procedure, uh, total of six, and again, you see everyone with the six, uh, with Pomona with the five. Investigation procedures, um, there are very detailed guidelines for HIB investigations, and later on in tonight's agenda, we will be doing the first reading of a policy with revisions related to HIV. Uh, here we have reporting and a procedure uh, for making sure that everything is reported. And then you can see here the totals. The maximum is, maximum is 78 points, and you can see the range of scores for the different schools and then the district grade. Um, you can see some points about what we have done and that second bullet in particular, um, when we looked at the HIB uh, uh, grades across the district and across the schools, that bottom bullet had listed the areas that we felt we had our greatest strengths from those eight core areas. We also believe in continual improvement. So here you can see for this car, even though this report is about 2020, 2021, we still want you to see the types of things uh, that we are doing and will continue to do uh, really to have that strong and positive school climate, that safe school climate, and to make sure that we're not just implementing the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law as well. Uh, additional focus points. And again, I don't want to read to you. And I'll be happy to answer uh, any questions from the board. Uh, not a formal presentation, but a few items uh, related to school opening. First and foremost, I want to say that it was wonderful to welcome back uh, the staff and certainly the students this year. Overall, everything is going well, seeing a lot of happy faces uh, at the beginning of the year. A lot of time is spent on what we call setting the stage, uh, welcoming the children, uh, building those relationships, uh, addressing the social emotional aspect and certainly also looking at procedures and guidelines and expectations. Of course, academics are underway as well as we continue to balance social emotional well-being and mental health with our academic learning and progress as well as physical health and safety. Uh, there are a lot of facility uh, upgrades and refurbishments done this summer. Uh, many of you know that we added uh, classrooms to Arthur Rand School, and uh, one of the other major projects was the entire repaving of the Reeds Road parking lot. Uh, I've had the opportunity to visit arrival and or dismissal uh, at all of the schools, and other members of our district administrative team have supported the efforts of the school administration and staff, particularly on the opening days. Uh, three of our back-to-school nights were completed last week. One is tonight and two the rest of this week. Uh, very active participation uh, by families at back-to-school nights. We are so happy to see that and have them back in person for the first time since 2019. Uh, transportation uh, is our biggest challenge, but I think if you talk to every school district, they would likely say the same thing. 
Um, the driver shortage does continue. We are working closely with Greater Ag and Integrity, uh, certainly the school administrators and office staff, as well as uh, Mrs. Nixon and her staff spend a lot of time working on that. We do have a shorter list of root concerns to begin this school year than we did last year, but also do have concerns that we are working uh, with the company and Greater Ed to address. Uh, my final remarks are simply to thank everyone for all the efforts in first the administrative team and those who worked 12 months for welcoming back the staff and then certainly for all the warm welcome uh, to our children and their families. Thank you. Um, the attorney's report, please. Good evening, everybody. Since the last time I met, I had the opportunity to work with administration on back to school items, personnel items, and student items. Thank you. Student enrollment report. Thank you. As of September 16th, uh, we have in district 3,034 students. When we add in students from uh, special services, other private schools, home instruction, uh, charter, or uh, preschool providers and choice, the grand total increases to 3,202 students. Thank you. We do have a resolution this evening to approve submission of the district's 2022-2023 virtual remote plan to the Executive County Superintendent of Schools, which is attachment D2. Can I have a motion to approve item number four? Is there any board comment? May I have a roll call, please? Yes. Farrah Blouth? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Yes. Dr. Billowu? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Colgettis? Yes. Dr. Carmenter? Yes. Vice President Dace? Yes. And President Carmen? Yes. Curriculum instruction, please. Thank you. Uh, resolution one is to approve curriculum documents for the following content areas in accordance with Department of Education student learning standards and the work of the district curriculum committees. I will do a reminder that at our August meeting, our curriculum directors provided an overview of each of these content areas. Additionally, prior to that meeting, uh, the link to all the curriculum documents uh, was sent to the Board of Education, and these documents have also been available on our website. Uh, two items that I want to note. Uh, one of the biggest areas of change in recent years is computer science and design thinking. It has moved away from learn how to do a PowerPoint, learn how to do a, a spreadsheet in a very isolated way, and really is more uh, teaching children how to understand how computers work, how to code, how to design, really looking at those STEM kinds of things and higher order thinking. Um, as everyone knows, family life is uh, a topic of conversation, and uh, we did take uh, note of the comments made at the last board meeting. We also held our first family life committee meeting. I'm pleased to say that we had more than 40 people participate uh, in this meeting that was led by Dr. Michael Hammond, the director who oversees the health and phys ed curriculum. Uh, there was a diverse group. Uh, there was time for questions and comments, uh, and I do want to re-emphasize that at the middle school level, this part of the curriculum does not start until second marking period. At the elementary level, in grades 2, 5, and 6, where you have the family life content, uh, that is not until May. And I will also re-emphasize that parents and guardians will be given plenty of time to receive the letters and review the information to make their decision uh, about their child's participation. And finally, in that area, and it's really about everything we do, we are looking to promote respect for all children and safety for them as well. So that is item one. Item two is a list of students for homeschooling. Thank you. Can I motion to approve items one and two under curriculum instruction? So moved. Thank you. Is there any board comment? Yeah, sure. Yes. Uh, we need to vote for all these uh, subjects, or we have to vote for individual subjects. Please do. The resolution is written as one. I'll defer to Mrs. Elko. Yeah, you can certainly choose to abstain from certain pieces. And I can choose to vote no for any of these. You can. Okay. Mrs. Colgate. Oh, just to say, um, 
to let people know that I'm, I'm excited about the changes to Visual Performing Arts Standards 2020. Uh, prior to this, this major overhaul of standards, the arts, um, the arts standards came about in 1996, and they didn't change for a very long period of time in the way that people approached um, learning visual and performing arts. And in 2020, it really changed to where creativity and the individual and individuals and students taking control of their learning, that's where things have changed. So when I think about how um, standards are changing, it's really turning into a more active kind of learning for students and less of the sage on the stage or very teacher directed and it's becoming, this is a big change in education, where it's becoming students learning to work independently, students learning to work with each other in small groups and it's happening across all of the um, subject areas and I, I for one am really excited to see this change and to see my children come home and excited about what things are changing and they get to be a little bit more um, self-directed in learning. So any other board comments? Um, I'm going to go back to the family one for just a moment. And um, I just want to say on that, you know, most of the curriculum I read through in the SI, I'm one of those people who actually read through the entire thing. Um, and most of the curriculum I was perfectly fine with. Um, family life was an area where I had some, some concerns and I went directly to Dr. G. Pinto on that. Um, and what I want to point out here, because um, I think that what I'm hearing out of the community um, is more than anything, and this has been addressed before, but I just want to bring it up again before we vote, is um, looking at the curriculum and assuming that everything that's out there that you're reading is being implemented here. And I think that it's very important to recognize that our teachers, curriculum advisors, administration have taken painstaking um, a, a look at it and said what they felt was appropriate and what they felt that scope that their parents should be looking at. Um, and I think that of all of the school districts that I've seen, Galloway has really made a big effort to be very respectful to the parents of our community. Um, and I just want to bring that up again, that I, I think that our, that's one of the things I can always say about Galloway is that we go out of our way to be respectful of the parents and what's a parent role and what's a teacher role. But also I think it's important to recognize that um, every child deserves respect, whether you agree with the choices of the, the choice of the student themselves or the choice of the parent. We live in a, in a society that um, we can look backwards and look at places where we've gone wrong before, but it makes so much more sense to look forward and say we are a global society and we are people who can look forward and say we've made mistakes in the past, but one thing that is wonderful about living in this community and living in this country is that we recognize the rights of everyone. And I think that that's a big piece of this curriculum is recognizing that everyone deserves respect um, and something that we really focus on. Um, it's, if you look at just the, the state standards, yes, I would still be concerned. Where I'm not concerned is that I think that parents have really been taken into account and that we can look at it and you have the option to opt out. Keep in mind that some parents may want to opt out of little pieces of it and some don't want to do any of that at home. And again, students need to be able to have that safe space. And this is a safe space for a lot of people. A lot of students come in here and this is the safe space for them to ask questions that they may not feel comfortable with asking at home. Um, I think we need to respect that. But also, I would encourage every parent out there that um, it, it's available. And if you're not comfortable with it, take this opportunity to say, I'm not comfortable with that. I want to teach my, my child that and opt out. Um, you have that right here. This is a district where you absolutely have that right. It's very well advertised, and you have the opportunity to take it. So, thank you. Any other comments, Mr. Gentile? Yes, I'd like to echo to what Ms. Chester said, and when these, when it was clear that these standards were going to be implemented, I, I don't think I'm misstating the state. I think everybody on the board had informal conversations with members of the administration. And it's the standards themselves that I, I understand the objections to them, and I, I myself have some concerns with regard to them. 
But the way the system is set up, the legislature, the legislature, the Department of Education promulgate these things, and when they perk down to the local community, it's incumbent upon the school boards to make sure that our administration is meeting and is uh, addressing the concerns of the community. And I have been overwhelmed, literally, by the way that our district has moved, our administration has moved with sensitivity, with deliberation, with inclusion, with regard to these issues, which are very sensitive, and, and is trying to strike a balance between uh, including all of the children and keeping all of the children safe. And I, I am satisfied, and while I don't necessarily agree with the standards themselves, I am satisfied that once again, the quality of our administration, the quality of our teachers in this district will ensure that our children are kept safe, the parents and their parental rights are respected to the extent that they indicate that they wish to exercise those rights. And it is only because of the nature of this district, it is only because of the care that I consistently see being provided to our children, and we were provide, provided to my own children, uh, actually in the last century, I think you said, that I can, that I can, that I, that I will vote for this, but it is because of our administration and because of the teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Hello. Seeing none, may I ask for a roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Permenter? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Yes. Dr. Bashara Blau? Yes. Dr. Villawood? Yes, but no to uh, Carmelina. That should be out on the physical education. Thank you. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Yes. Yeah. Vice President Days? After learning that the parents can withhold their students from the uh, health and physical education courses, I'm glad to hear that they can pull them out at their will and teach them at home, not in school. Uh, have to vote yes for everything else, so. Just confirming that's yes and all. Yes and yeah. all. For my open comments, what comments to be observed and listened to, please. Will do. And President Carmen. Yes. Thank you. Finance and school operations, please. Uh, Dr. Michelle Webb, was there a meeting today? I asked the Finance Committee, but prior to tonight's meeting, uh, we reviewed the bills list. There were no questions on the bills list. Um, there was a question that came up in regards to amending the bulletin for the um, number of free and reduced lunches. So there will be an update um, forthcoming as we approach the October 15th date, and then we also revisited the discussion of teacher substitute rates. Thank you. Moving on to finance and school operations, please. Thank you. Resolution 1 is to approve the bills list for the month of September. Resolution 2 is to approve um, authorization for the business administrator to pay any additional September bills for the school year. Resolution 3 and 4 are to approve final expense reports to be submitted from the 21-22 school year for federal grants. Resolution five, I need to make one addition. Uh, it's a resolution to approve Wendy Atkinson to participate in summer leadership and new staff orientation at a rate of $39 per hour, not to exceed 12 hours with the Title II account listed. Resolution six is to approve an increase in registration fees for the South Jersey Consortium. Resolution 7 is to approve tuition receivable students. Resolution 8 is to approve Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired Services for the current school year. Resolution 9 and 10 are to approve out-of-district placements and their respective costs. Resolution 11 and 12 are also to approve out-of-district placements and their costs. Resolution 13 is to approve non-public evaluators funded through non-public funding. Resolution 14 is to approve joint transportation contract with Gray Area Harbor Regional School District for the current school year. Thank you. Can I motion to items 1 through 14 under finance and school operations? So moved. Second. Is there any more comment? I do. I just want to say that I'm happy to see the um, consortium for gifted and talented coming back. They took off um, the spring because of COVID. Um, and we serve, I think, most of South Jersey. So there's students traveling from, from all over to come to the Saturday program. Any other comments? May I have a roll call, please? 
Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Sheriff Wow? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Yes. Dr. Billaroo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Yes. Dr. Permenter? Yes. Vice President Dace? Yes. And President Carmen? Yes. Facilities and meetings, please. Resolution one is to approve an additional facilities application to the Executive County Superintendent for the relocatables that were completed at Arthur Rand School. Thank you. Can I have a motion for item one under finance and meetings? I'm sorry, facilities and meetings, please. So moved. Is there any board comment? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Bashar Wow? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Yes. Dr. Billowoo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Yes. Dr. Permenter? Yes. Vice President Dace? Yes. And President Carter? Yes. Community Uses School Facilities. Thank you. This evening we have uh, resolutions for use for Galloway Pow Basketball, East Coast Crush Girls Volleyball, Atlantic United Galloway Girls Recreation Soccer, Atlantic United Galloway Girls Competitive Soccer, Men's 40 Plus Basketball, Boy Scouts of America, and Girl Scouts of America. Thank you. Can I have a motion to provide items one through seven under community use of school facilities, please? So moved. Is there any board comment? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Permenter? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Yes. Dr. Bashara Blau? Yes. Dr. Bilbo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Yes. Vice President Dace? Yes. And President Carmen? Yes. Personnel, please. Thank you. Uh, for the retire uh, the items, I will read them in their entirety. Resolution to accept, with regret, the letter of intent to retire from Ellen Bottom, Galloway Township Public School Child Study Team Secretary, effective December 31st, 2022. Mrs. Bada has worked in the Galloway Township Public School District for 14 years, and her dedication and services to students and staff are appreciated by our entire school family. Thank you. Can I have a motion to item one under personnel? So moved. Second. Is there any board comment? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Bashara Blau? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Yes. Dr. Billowoo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Yes. Dr. Carmenter? Yes. Vice President Dace? Yes. And President Carmen? Yes. Thank you. Item two is a resolution to accept, with regret, the letter of intent to retire from Timothy Riggs, Galloway Township Public Schools maintenance staff member, effective December 31st, 2022. Mr. Riggs has worked in the Galloway Township Public Schools for 13 years, and his dedication and service to students and staff are appreciated by our entire school family. May I have a motion to approve item 2 under personnel? So moved. Second. Is there any board comment? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Bashara Blau? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Yes. Dr. Billowoo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Yes. Dr. Permenter? Yes. Vice President Dace? Yes. And President Harmon? Yes. Thank you. Items three and four are uh, resignations. Items five and six are leave requests. Uh, item seven is to approve Jackie Hill Waltozer. Uh, item eight, Judith Mitchley. Item nine, Gina Larkin. Item 10, Annika Tatch. Item 11, Michelle Bolvid. Uh, they are all uh, for teaching positions. And then uh, we have Alexandria Lemero for an assistant, Meredith Howe, Stephanie Hamilton uh, uh, for full-time positions, Suzanne Kent, Christina Lyons, uh, Cindy Ford, Michael Elliman, and uh, Brigida Sutton for uh, assistant positions. And then we also have Paul Mazzetti for the night foreman. Uh, we have Morgan Phelps as a custodian, Stephen Wilkins as a part-time custodian, also part-time custodian Wilfred Lorenzo, uh, food service Brenda Ronaldo and Ty Kirschenblatt. Uh, we have a decrease in hours for Eric Walters. Uh, we have long-term substitute science teacher Deborah Summers and guidance counselor Patricia Stewart. Item 29 is adjustments to the salary guide with uh, earned degree status. Item 30 is for substitute teachers, and item 31 is for a substitute nurse. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve items 3 through 31 under personnel, please? So moved. Is there any board comment? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Permenter? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Yes. Dr. Bashara Blau? Yes. Dr. Billowoo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Yes. Vice President Dace? Yes. And President Carmen? Yes. Supplemental personnel. Thank you. 
Item one is a reapproval of the student council advisors. Uh, we needed to make sure the correct stipend was listed. Item two is uh, staff for the fall uh, consortium. Item three is additional school culture coordinators. Item four is for a supplemental middle school position. Item five, additional uh, district evaluation advisory committee. And then we get into a section that is additional staff that completed professional development that were not approved on a prior agenda. And that is items six, seven. Item eight is for interpreter services. Nine is presenter for new staff orientation. 10 is for additional staff for before and after school student supervision due to late buses. Item 11 is additional climate and safety committee members. Item 12 and 13 are for Title I programs at Roland Rogers. Item 14 uh, is a Title IV funded morning art program. Item 15, uh, classroom assistants who have earned a RBT or registered behavior technician status. Item 16 uh, is for members of an uh, English Language Arts Committee for Special Education. Uh, item 17 is for supplemental instruction. And then items uh, 19 through 21 are all related uh, to additional work for our school nurses. Uh, that's actually item 22 and 23 as well. Item 24 is for uh, training related to second step, which is our social skills program. Item 25 for one of our mental health specialists uh, to provide additional services. And finally, item 26 is for non-public evaluations. Thank you. Can I motion to move items 1 through 26 under supplemental personnel? So moved. Is there any board comment? Yes. I'm just happy to see that there's a morning art program and to see that those teachers are uh, more interested in, in coming early to do, to do that in, um, it looks like, four different buildings. It was a nice opportunity for students who maybe don't, are not the performers or sort of more quiet, um, creative types. So I'm happy to see that. Thank you. Is there any other comment? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Dr. Permenter? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Yes. Dr. Bashar Blau? Yes. Dr. Billowoo? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Yes. Vice President Dace? I was abstaining on item number seven, yes, on all of the items. And President Corman? Yes. And do we need to pause this evening to introduce anybody or no? Is there any I do not believe we have any of our new teachers here this evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to policy, Dr. Jane Quinto, are you have an update for us? Yes, as I mentioned, as I mentioned uh, during the uh, grades presentation, we do have revisions to the HIV harassment, intimidation, and bullying policy, and the revisions are based on uh, changes in the law. Um, uh, the copy for the board does have the changes highlighted. And I do want to mention that we received the guidance from the Department of Ed on August 29th, uh, but we've already actually reviewed everything, changed forms, updated the website, provided information out to the involved administrators and anti-bullying specialists. And uh, with that said, we still need to update uh, the board policy. So I'm certainly not going to read everything to you, but I want to highlight uh, some of the changes. One of them is that when a student is the aggressor in HIV and is confirmed, a copy of the letter regarding that goes in this child's uh, record. If the same student has three hits and they are the aggressor all three times in the same school year, a plan specific to HIV uh, needs to be developed for that child. It brings in some of the things that we were already doing related to cyberbullying and law enforcement. There is a brand new form that every district in the state of New Jersey has to use for the reporting of HIV that is already on our website. There are also a change that involves preliminary determination and a review by the superintendent. Uh, we also compared the recommendations from school boards with our existing policy uh, related to consequences and remedial measures and updated that section. We also added language that a parent or guardian, if they do not agree with the determination, has the opportunity if they want to appeal to the superintendent rather than going directly 
uh, to the board or other avenue. And uh, as needed, uh, the policy committee will meet uh, again before the October meeting. There is one item in here with the timeline that we need to finalize uh, in the language for one thing. So that's the quick update of many, many hours of work. Thank you, so can I have a motion to item one, which is the approval of 5131.1, harassment, intimidation, and bullying, the first reading, please. So moved. Second. Board comment. Yes. I do want to say the form, the updated form is really easy for parents to use. It's available, and I think it also um, helps for people who want to um, submit it anonymously, that way it's just easier that you don't have to go and approach somebody to get the form. The form is available um, so that people can submit it. And when I think about school safety, we think about sort of securing the building, but I think about school safety also as the climate in the classroom and the relationships, and when there is, we don't tolerate harassment, we don't, uh, we don't tolerate bullying in schools, that helps to create a safe environment. Thank you. Is there any comments? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gentile? Yes. Mrs. Avery? Yes. Dr. Bashar Blau? Yes. Dr. Villalou? Yes. Mrs. Chester? Yes. Mrs. Cole Geddes? Yes. Dr. Parmenter? Yes. Vice President Dace? Yes. And President Carney? Yes. Notice public meetings, please. Thank you. In October, November, and December, we have one meeting each month, right here in the cafetorium at 6 o'clock. Uh, special events, as I mentioned earlier, we still have GTMS back to school night, which is tomorrow night, and Arthur Green, which is Wednesday. Pomona is actually uh, this evening. Uh, and then the reminder about the, uh, the golf tournament, which is September 22nd. Thank you. Old business, anybody, um, and new business going around the board? Mrs. Cole Dennis. Just wishing everybody a great start to the school year, and I appreciate the parents coming out. I mean, just <laughs> by the parents. Um, and just how we are very responsive, I think, to, to listening, and I encourage parents to partner with the school. Uh, because this is, we're, we're looking at the end, which is positive outcomes. So I'm really happy to see you, Superintendent Greater Egg here, um, and our future superintendent here, and um, everybody working together. This is Avery. Uh, the Ed Foundation had a successful designer bag bingo Friday night in this cafeteria. I'm sure we made a decent profit. That will, we will use to support our field trips. Hopefully, we'll be bringing back teacher grants this year, I hope, um, and Chromebooks, et cetera, so on, whatever the schools need. So I just want to thank the board members that came and sat with, at my table or next to me, <laughs> and Annette and Amy also. Thank you. Dr. Bill. This is uh, Dr. Michelle Blount, sorry. I just have to say, apparently, I have to up my bingo game because I did not win anything. Um, so I have a lot to learn, and uh, I'll be prepared next year. <laughs> Mrs. Chester. Um, I did just fine. I got a Starbucks gift card. No, I um, I attended the back to school nights for um, Roland, Reeds, and um, Smithville, and um, I just want to say it was so nice to be in person again. And everyone. Um, Reads, of course, I attended as a parent. Um, so that was nice to actually see um, teachers in person for the first time in, um, I don't know, I feel like it's been two or three years now. So um, that was so nice to do that and, um, and be able to sit down and, and look at the classroom and not on Zoom. Um, and just seeing the parents coming in and stopping and talking to us and everything was just, um, it was a fun night. And it just finally felt like back to school again, um, rather than whatever, you know, hybrid you've been in uh, for the past couple of years, so I think a lot of us have been in different uh, zones of that. So anyway, um, very happy to be back to school, and, um, and it was fun night, and looking forward to, uh, to this week as well. Thank you. Dr. Palmenter. Mr. Gentile. Mr. Bates. Well, I can say that I'm welcome back to all of our staff. And I'm sure they will be teaching all of our little boys and girls about the schools with four R's and a D. Reading, writing, arithmetic, respect, and discipline. So God bless us all. I also wanted to you know, personally thank Mr. Mrs. Avery and Dr. G. Quinto for all the work on the Ed Foundation. It was a huge success last week. This room was packed, packed, solid. So that was really great. And then also encourage everybody to support you know, the golf tournament this weekend as well, or this week as well. 
Planning for Happiness is Happiness is Happiness also had a table um, of her associates there at the bingo as well. So really very much appreciated. And at this time, do we have any other further public comments? Seeing none, we do have executive session. Uh, so can I have a motion for the Gallery Township Board of Education to recess to executive session on September 19, 2022 for the purpose of discussing attorney-client communication and further resolve that the Gallery Township Board of Education's discussion of each subject matter in executive session shall be disclosed to the public if and when confidentiality is no longer required and action pursuant to said discussion takes place at a public meeting unless otherwise prohibited by law. Now therefore be resolved that the Gallery Township Board of Education will be in executive session for approximately 30 minutes and action may or may not be taken upon return. And it also be resolved that the Gallery Township Board of Education shall reconvene the open public session at approximately 8.15. Can I have a motion to go into a public session? I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Pre President Carmen? Yes. I would say that we'll probably have to be at about 5 to 10 minutes. Oh, okay. So we'll be back by 8 o'clock then. And then the faculty dining is where we're meeting. Yes, so can I have a motion? Please. I that. Yeah. So, <laughs> all, all, all in favor, aye. Any opposed? 